guys welcome back to this place if you are new welcome here for the very first time I'm Carmen this is River you can't really see her but she is here watching with us and today we are gonna be watching season one episode eight of for all mankind usually I'm very excited to get into these episodes these reactions because I really love the show and that is still true however after the way we ended the last episode with the possibility of Shane dying and the possibility that we're going to have to see the fallout of that with Karen and Ed, who is trapped on the moon alone. Um, I don't know if excited is the word that I would use going into this <laughs> particular episode. Um, maybe I'm wrong and it was just an accident but he survived which would be ideal yeah so i don't want to ramble too much because that is where we are and i want to see <laughs> where we're gonna go if if i'm gonna cry how much i'm gonna cry you know like let's just get into this episode and see what the ramifications of the last episode bring us okay so we're at the hospital so He's probably still alive. Paramedics reported a motor vehicle to bicycle accident. Okay, that's what I thought. Well, who hit him? We don't know. The driver left the scene. A neighbor found him in the street and called for an ambulance. They left. He's wearing a basketball uniform. A basketball uniform. <laughs> All right, so what did he break? Is he dead? Your son has sustained serious head injuries. His skull was fractured and there's bleeding in the brain. So he's not dead, but he's not okay. Wait, wait, wait. He, he what? We're doing our best to help him. He's in surgery right now to drain the blood and to alleviate some of the pressure from his brain. No, he's in surgery. Oh, she's in. She didn't realize. No, no, nobody asked me about surgery. Shane's never been under anesthesia it's before. It's a life-saving intervention, Mrs. Baldwin. We had no choice. I'm, I'm, so, I'm sorry. Like, life-saving? Did she not realize how serious? What, what the hell is going on here? No, I thought he broke bone or something. I know, I know. It's okay. No, no, no. This is not okay. This is not okay. Okay, well, let, let's just calm down. And, and if the surgery helps... I don't think that helps, calm down... A lot of times it does, and that's a good it's sign. It's the best thing to say to somebody in this moment. Shane is young, and youth is always on our side. Okay. I just, I don't know how advanced uh, medicine was in 1974 for brain injuries because like even today it's not great I wonder what he's doing now like getting samples and stuff and he's taking pictures oh oh yeah he's keeping surveillance That's not very hidden at all. We're here with the crew of Apollo 24. The astronauts tasked with bringing him home alive. Harrison Liu, Deke Slayton, Deke. and mission commander Ellen Waverly. I'm sorry, Ellen Wilson. Congratulations on your recent wedding. Thank you. For those out there who don't know, is a fine commander. I should know I trained her and put her in charge of this mission. I am sure she is. But some people feel Danielle Poole's incident at Jamestown raises questions about the wisdom of having women living on the moon in such harsh conditions. Seriously? Accidents happen. They're not gender specific. Thank you. Danielle Poole is a fine astronaut and she handled herself well. She did it to First, save Gordo. Patty Doyle's death, now this girl's injury. So fucking annoying. One has to ask. Have we gone too far, too fast in rushing women into... Haven't men died too? If anything, Mr. Newsom, it's taken too long. I believe women should have been part of the space program from the very beginning. Yes. You feel that way, Deke? Yeah, I'm sure he does. Do you believe women should have been part of the original Mercury 7? I believe the mission commander is always right. Okay. Harrison, you, probably you will be this. on the moon with Ellen for weeks, possibly months. Do you have any concerns about her physical fitness to handle living on the moon? Uh, first, uh, I prefer Harry. 
Second, I just want to say that the three of us have been training together as a crew for months. And I served with Ellen before in Apollo 19. Yeah. I've come to not only respect, but to admire Ellen as a mission commander and as an astronaut. Thank you. I'm not worried about serving under her at all. Well, there you have it. Thank you. Solidarity in space. I'm fucking sexist bitch. I want to explain to me how I flew two Gemini missions and now I'm backing up a chick, a geezer, and a Korean. He's Chinese. Huh? Harrison. His family's from China. Thank you. Even better. I forgot his name. Who are you? Remember when it used to be about merit around here? How good you were? Now it's about the color of your skin or what's down between your legs. I hate these people. They're so fucking annoying. When you first came in here, Gordo, do you remember what I told you? Gordo's in therapy. That this only works if you're completely honest, honest with me. Okay. He's lying. Uh, I'm sure. For one, uh, I guess I'm worried about my wife. Okay. Why? What are you worried about? I don't know. It's just lately she's been acting different toward me. Is it because y'all are separated? How long were you away? 145 days. Damn. What happened up there, Gordo? I don't think he's going to be honest, because he's scared. Shouldn't there be a couch in here? <laughs> Probably it's two billion. She's got a boyfriend. They're still studying. You're a real son of a bitch. What? Where were you really? Oh, he didn't tell her? At work. Oh, I called JSC. And they said you left work early, so. Who is so it this time, Gordon? He doesn't, she doesn't know he's Jesus in therapy. Christ, I, why are you calling JSC checking up on me? You know. To think I actually started to feel sorry for you when you came back. I thought to myself, you know what? Maybe, maybe I'm being too hard on them. Maybe, maybe I ought to cut them some slack. <laughs> but, uh, who is she? What's her name? Just be honest. Dr. Marston. Okay, he is. <laughs> he is being honest. Impressive. If you're, if you're screwing a doctor. No, I'm. I'm seeing a, a psychiatrist, Trace. A man, Dr. Marston. That's good. Okay. <laughs> He's not joking. Wow. Really, Gordo? The shit you come up with to save your own ass. Unbelievable. I'm serious. Trace. Okay. Dr. Marston. He has a card. This is good. A psychiatrist? Yeah. Uh, does anyone know? Does, if NASA finds out, they'll ground you. I know. He needs it, though. I've been real careful. I ain't told anyone. Just you. Why would they ground him for seeking therapy when that's what he needs? I don't think he's ready to talk about it. Nothing happened. We are no longer in a research and exploration world, Harold. Why? I have the backing of the president on this, General. This is NASA, not the Pentagon. How long is this guy going to be stuck up there? God damn it. Tell me they figured it out. We need to get him back down here. It's him. His brain? His brain. He just bumped his head really bad, but the doctor said, you know, the surgery's gonna fix him right up. That's not really what he said. But she has to do what she has to do right now to be okay. Hey, hon, you want me to take care of that for you? No, it's all right. 
think she has to like pretend. Is no one gonna tell Ed? Don't get too close to the edge there. I'm scared you'll fall in. I feel like he's too close to the edge. Oh, he's going in. Okay. By himself? Does this seem safe? spying on them too. I mean, they hit their camera a little bit better though, I'm not gonna lie. Inside our ice mining operation. Yep. This is full encroachment. What, what do you think it is, Ed? Never seen anything like it, sir. Some kind of surveillance device. So what should I do with it? Well, they if they're surveilling no, you. Leave it. Sir, you really they know think you saw, leaving right? a Russian device right next to our mining site is the right move here? We do not want an international uh, lunar incident. The president wants to avoid any provocative action. Well, they're the ones being provocative, sir, and I'm the one alone too. up here with them. Now, we need to send them a message that this shit won't fly, that this is our territory. Y'all are literally spying, too. I just am confused. Typically, I ask for both parents to be present before I have this conversation. What conversation? But due to your extraordinary circumstances. I, any conversation you need to have, you have with me right here, right now. Unfortunately, Mrs. Baldwin, because of the amount of time that passed between Shane's accident and his arrival here at the ER, he lost a great deal of oxygen to his brain. Oh, he's not waking up. I, I don't understand. Doctor, is Shane okay? Shane is brain dead. He's being kept alive on a ventilator. B brain dead? I, I, I've never, I don't, I don't know what that means. It's a relatively new term. It means that the brain isn't showing any signs of life on the EEG, even though the heart is still beating. But isn't it too soon to call? Baldwin. Yes. It's extremely unlikely that your son will ever recover from his accident. You know, 24 hours ago, my, my son was eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and he was talking to me about which baseball cards he was going to trade his best friend. And now you tell me that his, his brain is dead and it's extremely unlikely that he'll ever recover? Well, do you know what else is extremely unlikely? A man stepping foot on the moon. And that's where my husband is, 200,000 miles away, alone on the moon. So don't tell me what's extremely unlikely. If you don't mind, I'm gonna get a second opinion. That's a, that's a good idea. That's a great idea. Yeah, you're that geek's number, Thank right? You. Mrs. Baldwin, I want to make sure that you understand the gravity of If you don't mind, condition. I'd like to have a private Jeez. conversation with my friend. Thank you, doctor. I think you have to let her have this right now. You know? We need to tell Ed. Yeah. Absolutely not. Captain Baldwin is up there all alone. Who knows how he's going to react? You have to tell him. 
a risk we can't afford to take right now. I agree. If it were me up there, I wouldn't want to know. I would. What good is it going to do telling him bad news he's got no control over? He can't change a damn thing about what's going on down here. I'm telling you, all of you, I know Ed, and he'd want to know. Well, I don't know if that's the only consideration here. There have been several studies on the effects of psychological turmoil during high-pressure situations. We have to calculate the psychological risks. This isn't some equation, Margo. It's his son. He has a right to know. He's up there all alone. Exactly. I agree with Dick. He's alone, isolated, with no one to lean on. You can't just hide this type. It would be a mistake. Have you talked to his wife? <sighs> She's a denial. Have any of you talked to his wife? No. Of course I'm hearing a lot of different opinions here, and I'm not saying any of them are wrong, but she knows Ed best. It ought to be her call whether or not we tell him. <clears throat> Absolutely not. With all due respect, Karen, I think Ed deserves to know, and I know he could handle it. What would we even tell him at this point, Deke? We don't really know what's going on. The doctors here are all gloom and doom, but from what Dr. Weddle said on the phone, Shane could still recover. He said that? He said that this brain death thing is such a new concept that most of the doctors don't even really know what they're talking about, and that we shouldn't do anything until he gets here and he gets to conduct his own tests. Well, Brad doesn't... He didn't... That's... Well, that sounds like good news. No. I think so. And Dr. Weddle's the best neurologist in the country. I'll just let her. We'll let her. I know my shame. Denial. He can beat this. We'll let her have her denial. I'll figure out what to say She's gonna lie. later on when the time comes. Okay. What's that? What? That necklace. You weren't wearing that last week. Oh, it's nothing. It looks like a varsity ring. Just something a friend gave me. Oh. Did he also give you that hickey on your neck? Mm. I was really looking forward to today, Alita. To telling you your life is going to change in a big way, but I don't know, you're making it awfully hard because now we have to talk about the fact that you just lied to me. Oh. What do you mean my life is going to change? She accepted to some special program. It, it says I got in. Am I right? Is that is that what this means? Accepted into two advanced tracks: mathematics and physics. Yes, you made the cut. Oh my god! Oh. Uh, congratulations. <laughs> Um, uh, you're holding a ticket to the best universities in the country. Oh, wow. I can't believe this is happening. And you transfer to the Kennedy School right after first of the year. That soon? Is that a problem? No. No. It's just... Um, what? Oh, it's December. It's all the way across town. I'll have to leave... all my friends. So you'll make new ones. Her boyfriend. Can't I finish the year at Ballard and transfer to Kennedy in the fall? Alita, this is a very competitive program. Kids from all over the country are fighting to get in. There might not be an opening in the fall. Well, I can go in the spring, maybe. If that's what you want, it's fine with me. We don't have to do this anymore. You know, you go for it. You think I don't have a million other things I could be doing right now? There's a lot going on right now. I'm, I'm sorry. Miss Madison, of course I want to keep doing this. Then you I, need I... to focus. If you want to be an engineer, you're not going to have time for anything else because you're going to have to work ten times harder than the boys. You don't just have to be on time. You have to be early. Put everything else aside. You have to choose, Alita. You have to decide what you want your life to be. I don't see why she can't have both. Couldn't she just do long distance? Jerry Biddle, Houston Sentinel. 
Do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, go away. Yeah. Get the hell out of here. I'm trying to do my job, ma'am. Get, get the hell out of here. Your job is to harass a woman whose child is probably dead for all intents and purposes. He had a good game. Yeah? Yeah, he did. <laughs> he did. It was great. It was great? Yeah, I could see he was nervous at first. Of course, he was biting his lower lip like he always does. <laughs> One half. I remember. He's growing up so fast. So fast. Mm -hmm. <sighs> and he's always in a hurry to get somewhere. Like he doesn't have enough time. You know, I'm always telling him oh, just making it so sad. Slow down. They're making it so sad. Don't go easy. Don't be so impatient. There's plenty of time. Yeah, but who won? <laughs> who won the game? Oh, um, well, we did. Damn right we did. Mm -hmm. That's my boy. Yeah. Mm. <sighs> Sorry, I'm tired. No. It's been a long day. No, it's been a long everything. Yeah, I know. Mm. Ten more days to go. Love you too, baby. They're making me so fucking sad. <laughs> He's gonna be real mad when he finds out. I feel. But I don't. She. She's in such denial. Like. Did I just do something unforgivable? He did what he had to do. But if he, you know, what if it, what if he just just drive? Okay. Tracy, you should be driving. Why are you letting her drive? I don't think it's right. Mm -mm. Me and Danny, we're the ones talking to him every day. Can't just ask us to lie to him. That's exactly what I'm asking you to do. And if you are unable or unwilling, then we will find someone who is. It's not that simple. We were up there with him for 145 days. We have been through. I understand. But this is at the request of his wife. And we are going to respect her wishes in this situation. Karen wants it this way. I still disagree. I still disagree with this. I, I would want to know, even if I couldn't do anything, I wouldn't want to live. Houston? The Russians. James Town. <gasps> you there? Houston. The Russians said that. I'm reading you loud and clear. I just got a message from the Russian base. Roger that. Oh, God. What's the message? It's for me. It's got my name on it. It says, deepest sympathies about your son. So that for me. Maybe something got lost in translation. You mean you heard me talk to Karen about Shane's basketball game or something? They could be monitoring our communications. They're gonna lie to him could after be. this. Think you're screwing with me? Hello. Right here. Uh, got me. Um, I. I have no idea what they're up to. They're still gonna lie after that. Deepest sympathies about your son. These Russian bastards. First they invade our mining site, now they want to start playing head games. Want to distract me? Want me to start worrying about how things are back home? Want me to start worrying about my son? I mean, my son! 
I'll have to tell him. This is low even for them. Man, we shouldn't start to speculate on our motives here. I'm heading out to the mining site. You're gonna make him make a stupid fucking thing because you're telling him that the Russians are lying to him about something that's fucking true. <sighs> oh, that must be NASA's doctor. Mrs. Baldwin, I'm Dr. Weddle. I'm so sorry. I have checked your son's condition, and there's nothing more I can do for him. The amount of brain trauma and the combination of poor treatment. <laughs> that actress is really uh, knocking it out of part in this episode. Okay, you guys, so this probably won't be a super long post-episode discussion. I'm sorry if this was like a very quiet, sort of subdued reaction with a lot of crying. This episode was just really fucking sad. They kind of gave me a little bit of hope in the beginning and then very quickly yanked it out from under me and then made me watch the entire fallout of, uh, her thinking it was something small, realizing it wasn't, going into that denial phase, and then sort of dealing with the truth when she learned the truth, you know, um, or when she could no longer sort of run away from it. I want to say that Chantel Van Santen, I'm not really sure how to say her name, so I'm probably saying it very wrong, but she was also on One Tree Hill, which I adored her on. The, she just did an incredible job in this episode like truly broke my heart at every fucking turn like her acting was just incredible like I just I it was a very impactful and emotional episode and I think so much of that she really carried because watching her realize the truth throughout everything and go through the motions of everything and trying to figure out like if she should tell Ed and then telling Ed and then lying and then having those moments where she's thinking about her son and just all of it top tier like brilliant 
<sighs> incredible acting on her part. I fully believed every second of it and was emotionally shattered because of that. So I just, I really think that that needs to be said. Uh, yeah, she just did an incredible job. It was really hard to watch Karen sort of go through those motions and it's just, it's hard because I have definitely criticized both of them as parents in the past. Um, and I, I still stand by those, those criticisms. But that being said, I always hoped that they could like realize the ways in which they were sort of fucking up and adjust and switch and change and um, become better versions of themselves and parent better uh, in the end. And ultimately, unfortunately, that's going to be taken away from them, at least with Shane. I don't know if in future seasons they'll have any more kids or we'll see the fallout of this. I know a lot of times uh, relationships do not survive the loss of a child because it's just such a momentous, life-changing, horrific thing to go through that very few relationships are strong enough to to weather that. Um, I hope that they are because I think that they're really going to need each other when Ed finally is able to come home and they are hopefully able to grieve together. But again, we'll, we'll see how, how that goes. I, I did disagree about not telling Ed immediately. Like obviously I understand that for NASA, from a professional standpoint, and just from like, they've studied, you know, psychological facets of things standpoint, that maybe telling someone when they're alone on the moon and could do something really fucking stupid isn't the best course of action. But I just think that like, if I put myself in that situation, I would hate to live those days not knowing the truth and it would feel almost like my ability to grieve and process in the same way everyone else had would have been robbed from me right like it, it would have felt it would feel bad because it would feel like other people knew something that I didn't know and they were able to try to pr process it I guess like it's hard to explain why I feel that it would be so bad but I it just feels like if I would if something happened right and I'm just living my life blissfully unaware and then I get told like Oh, it happened like two days ago. Would I not look at those two days as like, how could I have been happy? How, like, I don't know. It's, it, it is very hard for me to explain why, but I feel, I just, I just feel <laughs> that I would feel robbed of, of the chance to, I don't know, go through the motions at the time when it was happening. And maybe that doesn't make any sense. Maybe that, yeah, maybe I can't explain it in a way that makes sense. Maybe it's just a weird <laughs> way of thinking about it. But I do think that when the Russians sent the message, they should have come clean with Ed. I, I don't think that that they should have lied to him at that point. Although I do wonder if him having gone out and destroyed the camera and then come back, like he was tired, he was sort of depleted. Maybe it's a good thing because when he found out, then he just drank and hopefully passed out rather than going and doing something really stupid. So I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. 
don't know. It's it's sad because it's I don't know because it's fucking sad, right? Like I don't know how this could not be sad. Like it's just How did the fucking Okay, sorry. For my moment to be angry in this episode. How does a person hit a child and then fucking leave? Like, the implication is almost like, oh, maybe he would have been okay if things had happened quicker. So maybe if the person hadn't just left him for someone else to find and then call the police, maybe he could have survived it. I don't know because I also I don't know like the level of medical advancements there were in 1974 regarding brain bleeds and stuff in the first place. Although this is like a historical fiction, right? So maybe there was um hi baby. Maybe there was more um advancements advancements than we know about. I'm not really sure, but I just I think that it would take like obviously you would feel horrible and you would panic, sure. That makes sense to me. But then you just leave. You just leave. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, for a second when that reporter came into the hospital to talk to her, I thought it was the guy who hit Shane and like that's why he was trying to get to her and, I, and then he was like, oh, I'm a reporter or whatever. But I thought it was him and he was just trying to like get information because he felt bad, but nope. That's just so, that's just so shitty. Speaking of, hey, 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 don't cheat us. Speaking of shitty, uh, those one astronauts were pissing me off being sexist and racist, whoever they were. I'm not sure if it was like, who it was supposed to be. I'm not sure who it was supposed to be, but they were pissing me off. Like the radio or not radio, the TV interviewer guy who was talking about like, oh, do you trust this woman to have your back? Like, oh, do you want to share close quarters with her? Um, sort of situation. Like, obviously I know that they don't know that Gordo was having trouble, which is why Danielle did what she did in order to bring them home. However, like multiple people have died in the space program before women ever entered into it. Yet it's interesting to me how none of the men are mentioned, you know? You know? Like it's, it's, it's not a failing on all men if a select group of men fucked up. But somehow it's a failing of all women if two women mess up. Make it make sense, you know? Make it make sense. I am honestly really proud of Gordo for going to therapy and for trying to get himself right, even though in the eyes of NASA, that's not what he should be doing and I'm sure in the eyes of society like that's not what he should be doing. Also I just think it's so fucked up that like if NASA finds out that he's going to therapy even if it's for like something completely unrelated to you know whatever happened to him like they're gonna ground him for seeking to better himself. They should they should openly encourage these people to go to therapy. They were in space for 145 days. That's over half a year, right? Wait, 150, 150. That's almost half a year. Sorry, my math <laughs> was not mathing. But that's almost half a year. And they're supposed to be there for like 14 days, 10 days. I don't know how long they were supposed to be there, but it wasn't fucking months and months and months. You know? So like, I don't know. That's also frustrating. Uh, I, I, I'm not 
frustrated with Aleda so much, like a little bit, but I, I'm not sure how old she's supposed to be, maybe like 15, 16, but it's like, I, it's slightly frustrating because we want her to, you know, become an astronaut. So we want her to like go and study. We don't want to let her to get distracted by a boy and let that derail her, you know, entire future and stuff, right? But at the same time, it's like, she's a teenager. Now, if it's only on the other side of town, I don't understand why they couldn't just keep dating when she goes to the program, to the school, and like, like what, what would stop them from still seeing each other, you know, on weekends or nights or whenever they could get together. Like, I'm not really sure why it seems like she has to choose between this and him but also like I don't know I kind of want it to be like he doesn't want to hold her back and so he lets her lets her encourages her to make the choice to go I'm not really sure I like I said, I'm not really disappointed in Aleda because I think she's a kid and like when you're that age and you think that you're in love, like you're going to make stupid choices and that's, that's fine, you know, because you're just being young and a kid and it makes sense, you know. I also understand Margot's frustration and being like, don't throw your future away for this person, you know, but... I don't know I guess we'll just have to see how how that works out and if Tracy does go in two weeks um and Deke I'm kind of worried that something is going to happen to Deke because I don't know it's just this has been his dream for so long and it's within his grasp which just makes me worried for him you know hopefully I'm wrong and he's fine and they're not gonna break my heart anymore this season but do I have trust mm, kind of got some trust issues now not gonna lie oh I think the only other thing that I wanted to say was it's so funny to me that Ed and the other military guy and the other guy from NASA get so upset about Russia having like these cameras spying on them when before, like a few scenes before, Ed found that camera, we saw Ed putting up a camera to spy on the Russians. <laughs> like, is, is the hypocrisy not getting to him? Like, I, you know, like, how mad can you be when you're doing the exact same fucking thing, right? Anyway. I think that's all I really have to say, you guys. Um, again, sorry, this is a more subdued, sad reaction. That's just the way that the episode went. And the, what can I do? I could go to sleep right now, honestly. Like, I've cried so much. My eyes are, like, tired. <laughs> anyway. Thank you guys so much for watching as always if you want you can watch the next episode right now over on patreon if you're watching this on youtube as well as my entire full-length reaction to this episode and all the episodes thus far of for all mankind that is over on patreon as well which is linked in the description down below hey don't scratch on the couch please stop it anyway i think i was done Hope to see you guys next time for more For All Mankind. Until then, bye guys.